Right, learners, let's move on to module 2.2 of our term to cat modules. And we're talking about the browsing experience. This will be a fairly short module, but we just want to look at the usability of websites and other factors that affect the browsing experience. So when we talk about the usability of web websites, we're talking about number one, the readability. Now people get irritated when the content is hard to read. So uh, this is going to tie into your HTML coding, where you are going to create your own websites, you want to make sure that you don't use a number of different fonts. Readability is important. So where that is concerned, you want to make sure you use headings, short paragraphs and columns. You want to use numbered or bulleted lists. You want to group related ideas together. You know, just keep it all maybe in um, a sentence case as opposed to an uppercase. And backgrounds that are easy on the eye, not lime green or shocking pink or things like that. Then we have navigation. So how easy can we move through the site do links work? Do they open up things properly? Links should be short. You should understand what the link is leading to. You don't want broken links, not at all. And links should be formatted in a consistent and standard way. And here you can see each one of these. If I click on these, this is going to link me to something else. All the same font, all the same color looks good, which leads me to the next point of consistency. You want to use the same basic layout, same colors, fonts, or themes, all right? Now, some people might say, oh, but this is boring. But there is a genius to this when it comes to making sure that your websites are consistent. Um, it helps people to navigate a lot easier. Um, it doesn't give them a shock to the system when they click on the uh, let's say catalog here for example and then all the colors are different the fonts everything and yeah it just sort of throws them out the layout is also important you want to make sure that the best it's best suited to the intended audience or readers the text and graphic objects are adapted to fit standard monitor sizes and resolutions you want to also look at things like the typography ensure that the fonts that you are using on the web page are easy to read they match the content they are commonly used and uh, are limited in number of different types. You don't want to have a ton of different font types in your website. The reason we do this is because some browsers on some phones might not be op might, might not be able to open some of these things. So you need to bear that in mind as well. And then some other factors that affect the browsing experience are things like speed. You want your pages to load quickly. Slow loading typically is caused by large files. So when we are wanting to open a file, you know, that's like 10, 20, 40 megs. Um, and obviously it depends on your internet speed as well. Then privacy, because what you do on the web is not always private. Okay. So some websites actually record your preferences. Facebook and Google may analyze your activity. And this is how many times malware can install itself on your computer. And we've spoken about the following one before, which is spyware, because this is any technique or software that tries to monitor and track the way you use your computer. And then it reports this info to a third party. So it tracks your use of the internet. It builds a profile on you for targeted advertising, and it can even steal your login details to gain unauthorized access. Now with spyware, there are also things called key loggers which capture all of your keystrokes. The most irritating one of them all is Adware. This is free software that's not really free. It's usually ad sponsored, but it just displays ads all the time when you are either connected to the internet or to start up your PC and it can pop up, you know, all over the show and it's really just blocking you. Um, and uh, you need some sort of ad blocking software to actually prevent this type of advertising. Right. So when we look at websites, we often have to evaluate them. Why do we do that? To see what is fake news, to see whether a story is a hoax, whether it's created to deliberately misinform or deceive readers. Fake news can be profitable business for online publishers because they get more people, you know, clicking on their on their links. Fake news stories can deceive people by looking like trusted websites as well. 
I'm sure we are very familiar with this. Um, even clickbait, right? These are stories that are deliberately fabricated to gain more website visitors. So you click on that and it just shows to the person that, ah, so many people have visited the website. Um, clickbait stories also use sensationalist headlines like somebody's died. Somebody's just passed away. This person was involved in an accident when nothing like that even occurred. You also get propaganda. Uh, these articles are created to deliberately mislead readers and promote a biased point of view or a political agenda. And we can see this <laughs> all over the show. All right. So you want to take a closer look. You want to look beyond the headline. You want to check other sources. You want to check the facts. That's what they call fact checking. You want to check your biases and then ask yourself, isn't, isn't this just one big joke, right? These are the things we look at and we look beyond when evaluating websites and making sure we're dealing with a solid source of information, right? And that's it for module 